the more farmers we meet and the more we get involved with this small farm, organic farm movement, we're realizing that farmers are the new front of the revolution. And the revolution to me is, are, is all about fighting the system, bucking the system, and the system is filled with, you know, GMO foods. We're, we're being fooled into thinking that what we get in the grocery store is healthy, and it's not healthy, it's not good for the environment, it's not good for us to in ingest, um, and we've gotten so off track with where our food is coming from. That needs to change, and I think the best way to do it is to start doing it ourselves and lead by example. So when Shane and I met, first met, um, um, I had actually just come back from Ireland where I was sort of trying to plan a farming artist residency project um, and had done a brainstorming session with one of my best friends there. So it had been on my mind and then we uh, moved to a collective living situation with um, a group called the Flux Factory and we were living in Queens um, in a communal, it was, uh, well, we made collective art and it was a communal situation. Um, so that kind of got us thinking more and more about starting a community and a farm and an artist pl a place that could be a residency program and sort of an alternative living situation. And then he brought me down to Texas and I saw um, actually not this property but his grandfather's property and fell in love with the environment and it just clicked for both of us. He's always wanted to move back to the farm and yeah. So. Right, ever since I was a kid. I mean, he used to come out here all the time and um, do stuff and I always kind of wanted to live out here but it's funny that my grandparents would always kind of deter me like you know it's hard work it was kind of like this like it is hard work <laughs> it is hard work no but it was kind of like this mantra they had of like keeping me like trying to keep me uninterested in it but um I always wanted to do something I just didn't necessarily know what that meant I mean, this year is it's really we're still trying to figure out how to work with the Texas landscape and what works well for us um so as far as animals we've got chickens uh we have guinea hens we have turkeys um and then cats and dogs and a fawn who just happened to come to us. <laughs> um, as far as the, the garden goes, right now we have um, two gardens. They're both raised bed and then one's a container garden and that's just for feeding us. Um, it's 190 acres here and we would like to expand. Right now we're on an acre, but we actually want to kind of form a, a more permanent community of like-minded people out here. And the idea is to create small villages throughout the acreage um, where people come in and they contribute to the farming aspect or to maybe a handicraft aspect or cooking or they somehow give to the project and it it would be you know more of a communal living type situation that all revolves around farming and art. The first time I came here was in the dark and and Shane and Allison picked me up at the airport in their van which now is parked over there um, and they pulled in and it was really dark and they pulled out their flashlights and we went into the tent over there which is and, and opened the door and I was like I'm stepping right into it it's right now the time is now for the alternative community as opposed to 30 years ago so it's interesting to me on an everyday basis what it is like to live here and it's really nurturing for me too. Um, I live in New York City, it's all about money and status and aggression, and this is a really different kind of life out here. I'm a painter, um, I um, mostly just make paintings, I've done other stuff too, but mostly just painting. And um, it's funny because when we moved here, I knew, well, I wasn't gonna have a studio. I mean, we, we've done everything from scratch. We built our own buildings. I mean, there was nothing, there was like land to clear. We started living in a, uh, when we first got here, we were living in a 20 foot by 13 foot tent and like we couldn't even bring it out here at first. We had to have another campsite further away because it was so thick with brush and stuff. Um, I do sculpture and performance art and um, it always involves sort of um, performances that, that sort of incorporate the audience. So the idea is that art breaks down and the barrier between art and artist, I mean, artist, art, and the audience becomes sort of indecipherable, um, which I feel like is kind of what we're doing here, you know, we're, we're trying to bring creativity into every aspect of our lives and um, creating a, a place where farming becomes an artistic act, um, building buildings is an artistic act. The biggest impact for me is um, this is, this is a, the longevity of the project. Like most of my projects are like two and three, two or three months in duration, you know, and it's like, it's in the social practice kind of realm, you know, but I'm specifically interested in these social groups and we're finding them and, and, and just being immersed in them. This is something where um, 
yeah, I came last summer. Sure, I came out in the spring. Here I am again. I'm supposed to be doing research to build a building, and I have a little bit of seed money, and I'm, I'm hoping to uh, find more, but it's a long-term project. It's, it's gonna take years. It's like a long, it's a, maybe it's the structure because there's so much going on here. You know, everyday life, there's all these chores, there's all this stuff you have to do just to stay alive and be part of the community. And then you can focus on the thing. Um, it, it's, I've always had the mindset that art doesn't need to be separated from life. And uh, so it doesn't need to be on a, in a frame on a wall. It is what you do. And, and maybe it comes, I'm from California in the seventies, I guess there was a lot of conceptual art that was a lot like that. It was very, very like, this is, you know, I'm standing on my head, uh, you know, in a valley and, and this is my performance. That's it. You know? And yeah, they were taking photographs. Nobody's really taking photographs here. It's, it's, yeah, there's photographs that get posted, but, um, the environment itself, I think is the art project. I think it's important for artists to come out and have somebody to see. Step into a farm, yeah. yeah. Like step into a working farm, um, so that that's influencing the work they're making and their thought pattern when they're out here. I'm really interested in not only what Habitable Spaces is doing, but also the kind of do-it-yourself culture that happens locally, like around Kingsbury. If you look around, you'll see like a railroad car with sliding glass doors on it, and you're like, how did that happen? Or somebody has a shed and they've got some top from a semi and like it's propping up the shed as some kind of fiberglass shell, and you're like, that's really interesting, like this kind of, how, how can you do things without it being like the standard? Um, and economically and all this stuff. So there's all this kind of local knowledge that I'd like to find out about. system like the symbiotic relationship with the farm to the domesticated animals and the domesticated plants and the domesticated people like yeah you know it's all animal and plant technology and they, everything has evolved together over you know uh, probably thousands of years to work together uh, I think it's beautiful to resurrect it there was like a back to the farm movement in the 60s you know in the late 60s a lot of people tried to go back to the farm and they all they tried it, they starved, and they left. Um, I was talking to a friend who was alive then, because I'm too, I'm too young <laughs> to, to remember this, and she was saying it was more about opting out of the system because of the Vietnam War. So you'd drop out, and you'd, um, you'd create your own system because you didn't want to participate in this Vietnam War machine. I do think there is a movement happening um, between people wanting a change and people wanting to not be restricted to that kind of lifestyle. Um, and you can see it, I mean, in New York City where we're from, it's like there's beekeeping on rooftops, there are people who have chickens in Brooklyn, you know, it's, it's happening. Um, it is happening, but right. I think that small farmers are heading it up. Like even though we have like acreage to do stuff, but we kind of like doing like raised containers and we, ha we, we don't have any drip irrigation yet, but like stuff that um, when people come and see it, they're like, oh, I can do that in my backyard. And so people realize that they can kind of take away from what we've done and, and kind of make their own you know, garden and stuff, like just in their backyard and like grow a lot of their vegetables. Like in a quarter of an acre, you can grow like enough for a family of five. I do, I do think there's value right now in particular to learn how to live a bit more close to the ground. Um, I'm not, a, I, I don't believe in the apocalypse necessarily, but I do think that learning how to store your food, whether it be cabbages or whatever, without necessarily electricity is really valuable. I think we use a lot of resources in our life today that may not be around like 50, 60 years from now, especially with climate change and infrastructure change. You know, it, revolutions, there's so many different kinds of revolutions, but those that just buck the system and throw it over, well then the system just gets put back in place. Farmers are the true revolutionaries because they're not doing that. They're just living and creating an example and setting a new structure. And before you know it, I think that that structure will have permeated society and people will just start thinking differently about food. Is this GMO? Is this organic? What does organic mean? Recently they came out with a study that organic food isn't actually more healthy for you. 
Well, first of all, I don't believe that, but second of all, that's not the point. The point is that organic food doesn't poison the ground that we live on, doesn't poison the water systems. Non-organic food does run off from it, goes into our water systems. We're drinking it out of our wells. We're, it's in the earth. GMOs do. Organic food and organic people who are, are not doing that are not participating in that system. They're refusing. They're saying no. And so I think that's what we're doing. I see that, I see that in a lot of farmers and farmers markets and people taking a stand. And, you know, in this society, it's very easy to feel powerless. And so I think farmers are some of the few people who are taking the power back into their own hands. In this country, we live very well. Um, that might change. Um, over time. In other countries, people have not forgotten how to do all this stuff. Um, but we have here, a lot of us have. Many people live close to the land here and the people in the cities don't understand that. So yeah, it is funny because we're probably city people trying to come into something that's country. Except for Shane, you know, his, his grandmother lived down here during the summers, you know. I, I think there's a lot of value. This is the future, I think. Getting big. Is that Kermit? Yeah, it's mm. fat so.